Welcome, my name is Polish Links. This is a game by CNT from which for the studio from which I played the game and I recorded before Restaurant Amora that was. Now we're gonna play the elevator. Wonder what's about. Everybody's got some skeletons in their closet. They don't want anybody else to know about. Me? I've got a warehouse full of them. When you work in a job where you get shoved into the dregs of society, where you've become so desensitized, the sight of a dead body that you can't even joke about it. Life is pretty big. Even now, I can remember the look of that guy's face. It's been burned into my head like a brand. Please, he said. Even after he'd killed all those people, he was still expecting mercy in his last days. He couldn't see the angry, horrified looks on the faces of the people around him. Had no concept of the fact that what he'd done was wrong. That was the first time in my life that I realized. First time it finally hit home that there are people in the world like that. Twisted psychos who think they are the heroes and everyone else is believing in the wrong god. I couldn't sleep for days after he was executed. Did I feel bad for him? I don't know, I don't think so, but nonetheless, sometimes I catch myself wondering if maybe he was right all along, and I've just been strong along with everyone else. Pretty fucking morbid to be curious about the serial killer's god, huh? But all in, in all my life, I never felt as sure of myself as he always did. Since that case was my big achievement, the pinnacle of my car, it was the one memory the force let me keep. Awfully nice of them, isn't it? Letting me relive the time over and over. The look on his face every time he could talk to me. His eerie grin and he was being executed. As he was being executed. I don't even remember why it matters anymore. Just that it happened. Yeah, it definitely happened. Sometimes, I almost forgot. Forget. I have a warehouse full of skeletons, but they are all in locked boxes now, except for the one. And maybe it's better that way. Oh, you still here? You still here? Here. Yeah, what's the problem? Nothing, you just really clock out and go home by now. I've got some stuff, I still need to care, take care of. Crime never sleeps. Uh, for the Jensen case? I let out a sigh. The Jensen case is the big one that we've been hacking away at for the last week's missing boy. Possible kidnapping. But with no ransom message after weeks, we're skeptical. Still haven't made much progress in finding him. I feel like I'm missing a, a detail somewhere. Are you sure this is everything? I gesture the computer screen and it automatically opens a holographic array of all the information John's gathered so far. Dave, I've gone dumpster diving for some of that. If there's anything else, I sure as hell won't be able to find it. Damn, sorry. I know it's not your fault, but it's hard answering the parents' phone calls every day and having to tell them we haven't found their boat yet. They boy yet. Ahem. <clears throat> their boy yet. I know, sorry, I had this missing for people cases more than anything. Seems like 80% of the time they just end with a dead body. Awfully optimistic of you. Yeah, well give me something to be optimistic about. Don't stay here too long, Dave. Or the elevator girl will worry about you. I never run into her on my way out. You never know, one of these days she might catch on to your work schedule. Well, guess I'm heading out. Gotta catch the sky tram now, or I have to wait for the 8 o'clock on one. Alright, see you tomorrow, John. Once he's gone, I sigh some more. This job never gets any easier. Years ago, I was in the city volunteer militia. Ended up getting hired to work for the district police in the homicide department. It was rough work, but I enjoyed laying the minds of the victims' families to rest. I think, honestly, 
I don't remember much about what went back then. Once I started working for the district, I got a chip implanted in my brain to improve cognitive function. I developed a photography memory and an almost perfect recall system. But at the ends of big cases, especially ones where district corruption was involved, I had most of my memories of the case whipped. It wasn't just me, it was corporate policy. All the detectives had it done, I didn't mind it too much back then. At times I even thought it was a gr great not to, have, uh, to not have to remember the bad things. I could just focus on the task at hand. Pretty interesting, don't you think? It's about future and generally you have some chip implanted and they can alter or alter your memories or well wipe your memories pretty crazy thing if you ask me I wouldn't like that definitely but I guess uh, right now you don't need to be afraid of that actually I'm I'm pretty sure about that somehow or maybe it just happened and we don't know that okay that's just stupid talking let's go with the game uh, at times I even thought it was great uh, yeah continue guess I should go to I'm not getting anything else done in this office, that's for sure. Our office is on the 78th floor of this building, a rundown place of the far east side of town that's high. Even the elevator is old technology. I have to wait ages for the elevator to reach me now since John just took it all the way to the ground floor. Hell, he might not even be there yet. Oh. Woo! Interesting. Yeah. You can see three point three twenty two a.m. Uh, I'm recording at this time. Crazy, but forgetting the bad things. Yeah, I used to think nothing of it. All the blood, the killing, the torture, the rape. I could forget about those times and move on with a clear conscience. And then there was the case of the soft shore killer. So called because his victims were all people whom he caught at the nearby stretch of beach. They were all tortured viciously and then murdered for their trouble. By the time I caught him, he'd murdered 46 people there that we knew about. There were many reasons to believe that he'd killed other people in their other locations too, but before he settled on the south shore. But we could never implicate him for it, and he'd never confess. Avery Macmillan, I'll never forget the bastard's name. Couldn't even if I wanted to. We did end up finding the Jensen kid, thank god. He just wandered back out of nowhere, dazed, but without a scratch on him. John found him and brought him home, and that was that. I still can't believe that happened. You think he just ran away from home? Maybe. He says he doesn't remember anything that happened over the last few weeks, though. So. Yeah, I hope nothing happened to him. I told him the parents they should have him checked out at the hospital. I doubt they will. It costs way too much in this district. Can they just go to another district? Dave? <laughs> ah, sorry, yeah. You should get some sleep. I don't even know why you show up to work today. Not like we've got other cases to work on. Unless you really did show up just to see the elevator girl. The hell I? I think you like her more when you're letting on. Maybe it do like her. The elevator girl, huh? John thinks too much. I'm practically twice her age. Still it's strange how she just became part of my life so easily. Without even trying. Well, even if she's twice her age, she better be over 18. It all started a few days ago. No, I guess I have to go, go back further than that. 17 years ago, I became a famous practically overnight after my team apprehended the South Shore Killer. Avery Macmillan was the worst serial killer anyone had ever seen 
since the Green River Killer centuries back, so I shouldn't have been surprised. Still, I wasn't used to the ancient, not by long shot, up to that point. I'd had most of the memories of my cases systematically wiped. I didn't care about taking credit for my deeds, I am a bored introvert and I didn't get into that line of work for the fame. But the district wouldn't let me forget about this one. Everywhere I went, my face was rubbed in it. I'd done some shady things to catch McMillan, I had to. The man was a genius. A crazy son of a bitch, no doubt, but a genius. I barely caught him and it sure as hell wasn't because he was getting myself messy, like the public still believes to this day. I couldn't handle all the attention, the pressure. All I wanted was to do my job, being called a hero because I'd handed with the mafia to hunt one man down and ultimately kill him. It left a bad taste in my mouth. The higher ups hated how I criticized them for their mistakes. I said to the press, maybe unwisely, that we could have solved the case sooner if certain members of the district council had been more cooperative. They had to shut me up so I was promoted, kept away from serious cases and expected to hob hob hobnob with the upper echelon. echelon. It wasn't me. I had to get out of there. So I left district, police force and my best friend Jonathan North left with me. We moved ourselves into the east part of the district and bought some cheap space in an old building to use as our office. Our private private detective agency will take a, any case as long as it's something we believe in. Our place is just one little speck of idealism left in this lousy, fucked up district. Even though this building has more than 80 floors, most of them are empty. Most places nowadays are more high-tech and fancy. This skyscraper is a relic of a bygone age. But hey, the rent is dirt cheap, so I won't complain. There's a pharmaceutical place with an office somewhere in the 40s and some other research facility somewhere. Well, I actually don't know much about who else is in the building. It's John's job to be on top of that sort of thing. It's not something I have to bother about since it has nothing to do with my job. For years, I was perfectly fine not thinking about the other tenants and what they do here. That's what I thought. Until she started showing up. A young girl in her twenties, the prime of life. I was about that age back when I was still a starry-eyed recruit at the police force. It's pretty rare seeing someone this young working in this part of town. Most of us settle here because we can't go anywhere else. An intern? A temp? My mind came up with a quick explanation and settled for it. The girl didn't matter to me. The first day, I caught her glancing at me f a few times. She didn't look nervous at all, maybe just a curious. I don't exactly look like a researcher, which is what most of the people in the building do. She was probably just cut off guard. But we didn't make any conversations at all during our time together and she quietly got off the elevator once it reached the 15th, 54th floor. So there is another office on floor 54. I met her to myself once she was gone but that was all. The only reason I even remembered this brief insignificant moment is because of the fact that I can't forget things once they are in my head. Not anymore. After that, I began to see her in the elevator every morning, rain or shine, weekday or not. If I was in the elevator going to work, she was, so she was, so was she. I can't think of a single time when she wasn't there with me after the first time, even to this day. For the first several days, we didn't speak to each other at all. I guess either she's as much of an introvert as I am, or we just didn't have anything to say to each other. I could have made conversation, if I really wanted to, but I didn't so. I didn't. She's looking at me again, but what's with that face she's making? Excuse me? Yes? I was surprised she was talking to me. She had a high voice, edge with concern to fall it was. Your shoulder. What about it? There's blood seeping through your shirt. I can 
I can see it from here. Why? You wanted to say smell? Huh? What a sensitive girl she is. Sorry, happens a lot in my line of work. Your line of work? I'm a detective. I had to apprehend a runway last night and he gave me some trouble. A runway? A criminal that tried to run? It wasn't anything that glamorous. A runaway cut. <laughs> I see. Sounds like you've had a rough night. I've definitely had better. A strange tension that had always been there between us lifted after red. Oh, sorry. I'm Elena. Elena Cormack. I see you every day, but I've never introduced myself, huh? Sorry for being so forward. Don't worry about it, I'm not exactly the type to stand on ceremony. I'm Devin Carmichael, good to meet you. So there is a detective agency on the 78th floor, I had no idea. Well, we are pretty quiet and we don't bother the other tenants here much. Most people don't know about our agency unless they actively look for it. I see, well we have some time before this elevator reaches my floor so why don't I take care of that uh, wound of yours? There's no need to. Come on, don't stand on ceremony, Detective Carmichael. Fine, kids these days. Elena pulled a small first aid kit from her jacket pocket. Uh, while I rolled up to my sleeve, she had the wound taken care of in no time at all. So, I take it you work for a pharmaceutical company here. Why would you think that? Where else would you have a first aid kit? Actually, I'm a secretary at a travel agency, the Pluma Agency. I carry around the first, this first aid kit because it's company policy. Ha! <laughs> Do people get injured enough at, your, enough at your office to warrant that? You'd be surprised how much trouble people can get themselves into with a paper cut or a letter opener. That's amazingly sad. But I guess my saying that is like the pot calling the kettle black. The pot, huh? Damn, the age difference is showing. It's an old phrase. I was saying that I shouldn't make fun of them when I got this much damage from a cat. <gasps> I see! Oh, this is my floor. It was nice talking to you, detective. So that's how it started. From then until now, a good seven months or so. The two of us have been, well, elevator bodies, I guess. Maybe bodies is taking a little far. Anyway, we don't always talk up a storm, but she's always there.